Let's create a lidded box in Tinkercad. It could look like this, which I tried to make look like Swiss cheese. It could look like this, which has an inlaid SVG file as part of the image. You decide, right? Use your imagination. Either way, let's get started. So I'm gonna drag over a box shape. You could work with either a box or a cylinder, or you could get fancy with some of these other shapes, but I'm going to start with a box for our box. And let's set, I'll make the size 60 by 60 millimeters. And our height is looking like, where are we height wise here? 20. I'll take that. That works well. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to control C and control V and make a copy of this. And then I'm going to make another copy of it. And I'm just going to set that copy over there. And I'm actually going to now take our first copy. This is go I'm going to turn into a hole that will be the inside of our box the interior space. So our outside box is 60 by 60. I think I will make this one right here. Let's make it by 50 by 50. So we have some nice thick walls to work with. And then I am going to make a copy of this. You'll see why in a second. And I'm going to set that off to the side. So now I'm going to take what will turn into our hole shape for the box and wait for it, turn it into a hole. Now I could just drag it over and eyeball the placement. I bet you could do that too. But Tinkercad has an alignment tool that makes this job much more precise. So I'm going to click and drag and select both shapes. Go up to the alignment tool or press the letter L on your keyboard. And you'll see how these dots appear. The center dot means center it at that axis. Center it at that axis. So now I've got it centered. And then I'm going to rotate my view, grab the cone, and lift it up a little bit. I want to make sure that it is fully lifted out of the red box so that I have a good, um, I know that I've got a solid base and that it's not poking through like this. If you look underneath, you don't want a hole in the box because then all of your precious belongings will fall out. All right, cool. So that's centered. I'm happy with its position and size. I'm gonna click and drag again and select both and go to the group tool or press Control G and there's the interior of my box. Now I can drag this off to the side and let's make the lid. So you may remember, I made a copy of the outside part of the box. And then I made a copy of what would turn out to be the hole. I'm going to center the smaller box inside of the bigger box. This is going to become a lid with a little bit of a lip or edge to it to hold it in place. So let's select them both again, go to our alignment tool, align in one axis, align in the other. But then before I get any more interesting, I'm going to make this lid much thinner. And now I'm going to take the interior part of the lid and also reduce that. So now I have my lid with a lip around it. All I need to do is group these two, like so. Select both, click the group tool. And I could say that I'm done, but I'm not, because I would like to put a design on the lid of this box. So let's rotate it. The rotate tool is when you click on the box and you see these curving arrows and I'm going to hold down the shift key and click so it jumps in increments until it's upside down. Awesome. 
Now let's bring in an SVG file that I've already converted from a PNG so that I can import it into my design. So I will go to import, choose file, and I am going to bring in this one right here. Now, if I import it, it's probably going to come in giant. It may be so large that it can't be imported. So I'm going to shrink it down to like 30% scale and import and we wait. And there it is. Not bad, huh? So at this point, I can grab the shift key and resize it. And as a designer, you have choices. You could make it a raised design like so and group those two or you could click on the shape that you just imported turn it into a hole and then group them together like this like that and you get a nice embossed design into your box lid last thing before we're done i'm going to vote that you print this so that the design the top of the lid is facing up and then i'm going to ask that you put them as close as you can together without them touching because this will speed up the 3d printing a little bit so that the print head does not have to travel as far your last step is to go up to the name click on it Change it to your last name and the word box, because that's what it is. That way, when I'm printing it, I will know whose is whose. And then you're all set to export as an STL. Make sure everything in the design is checked. Click STL. There's your name already. Download it. And then if you're working with me in my class, upload it to the Google form so I can get to work printing. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it and have a great day.